Welcome to Granny United Church. We are so excited. We are pumped you're here. So excited that you just interrupted me. But I'm so pumped that they're at church this weekend. Continue. Okay. I'm so sorry. So the point is, we're really excited. Yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but on behalf of our lead pastor, Anthony and Christy Miles, welcome to church. It's so good. And I am so pumped up because it's Warrior Conference weekend. What is that, you may ask? Well... It's a little thing where all the guys at Granny United Church and our network churches, we have uh, over 20 churches that are a part of this weekend, and we get to go to Waterville Valley, uh, awesome teaching sessions, worship time away. It's, it's great. And so that is happening well this weekend. And so we're really excited. So let us know in the comments if you're a warrior. Yeah, this may be your first Warriors conference. You're excited about it. Or maybe you've been to a bunch of Warriors. Let us know in the comments. And you know what? Shine Conference. I'm, I'm repping. You're repping shine, the Shine yeah. Conference. So if you've been to Shine Conference. There's a lot of warrior going on. I needed to. Yeah. Because you know what? Our Shine is, the, our, our women are warriors. We're all warriors. So comment below if you've been to one of the conferences. Um, that'll be fun. And if you want to go to a conference, you haven't been there yet, you want to go, put an emoji there too. Yeah, well, let's, yeah, that's good. It's like Oprah. Everyone. Everyone, Everyone gets, gets an emoji. An emoji. <laughs> That's but funny. if you are on Facebook or right now, I invite you to share this out. Um, we are in a series called My Story, and you never know what an mm. impact your story has on other people. And that's partly what you post on Facebook. You never know who's watching, who's listening, who needs to know the hope of Jesus, and right. who is getting that from just the things that you post. So taking a second to share this out makes a huge impact that you might not even ever realize. Yeah. Also, if you are on YouTube. So YouTube family. You're included in, I like I sang that. It, I sang it, yeah, it was good. Wow, you should feel special. If you are on YouTube, make sure that you, you like this, subscribe to the channel, and you can also copy and paste that link and share it to someone. That's really good. And we also have an opportunity every time we get together as a church to participate in giving. Now we think that giving is more than just a transaction, but it's actually an act of worship where we give to the Lord out of what he has given to us. We're blessed to be a blessing. Blessing. You write that in the comments. We're blessed to be a blessing. And so we are a blessing over the past month. We've, um, as a church, We've made a, a point of blessing our firefighters and our first responders, our police officers and our communities. And, and, and this is a part of it, is, is we give, we're blessed to be a blessing to our communities and to our communities around the world, to our missionaries and our church plants and feeding centers. You get to enter into that. We get to enter into that when we give. Now, Care Faith and I give online, online recurring giving. You can go to graniteunited.com slash give, or you can text the number on the screen to text to give. It's really simple and it's safe and you get to be a part of something so much bigger. And uh, so that's why we love being obedient to the Lord with our worship and our giving. And right now, as we are getting ready to worship with our voices, uh, we're getting ready to sing together. I want us right now to slow down. This is a time where we are giving something to our Heavenly Father. Right. You know, a lot of times during our message, we're receiving and receiving, and right now it's time to give. So lock into the words. Um, it doesn't matter how you sound. It doesn't matter if you are in a crowded room or if you are by yourself. This is a time to slow down Tell the Lord, tell God how much he needs to you and really focus on him. And I guarantee that that will change the way that you hear this message if you take the time to focus on our Savior. So let's sing together.
granite in the house. Hey, I am super duper glad to be with you this weekend. I want to thank Pastor Anthony, his amazing staff. I just, th this is kind of a second home for me. If I, if you were to ask me if I had a vacation home, I live in Plano, Texas, but I guess I should probably get a condo someday in Salem, New Hampshire, because I consider this my home away from home church. We sure do love you, Granite, and I probably feel a little bit of fiduciary responsibility to throw up the hype level to the next level, to the <laughs> not to copy your pastor, but I feel responsible to do that since this is Warriors Weekend. So I want to thank you for having me here. Honored, blessed. I just, you, you guys, if you've been a part of Granite for any amount of time, you know how much my wife and myself love. Love, love, Pastor Anthony and Christy. We thank you for sharing them with us. He's my pastor too. And I call that guy probably four to five times a week when he answers his phone. I try, a lot of times when I try to call him, he's already doing a Facebook Live. So it's really hard to find the perfect time to do that sometimes. But I sure do love him. We love Miss Christy. We just thank you for your investment in our lives, in our church, and for the partnership that we have and we're just honored and blessed to be able to be with you here at Granite United this weekend. So I want to share with you some thoughts today, that some things the Lord's put on my heart to share with you as I'm going to be with Granite all weekend long, and I'm so blessed to be here with you right now. I want to talk to you about being an influencer, and I call this message today, Not a Lot of Influence. I want, let, let's understand what the idea of an influence or an influencer is. An influencer is a person who inspires or guides the actions of others. Now, this is a very, very popular term today. Anybody that's half my age or younger, okay, understands what the term influencer means by your number of followers that you have on Instagram or old school Facebook or, or TikTok, tickety-tock, TikTok, tickety-tock, or whatever it is that you follow or that you're a part of, you hear that term influencer a lot. I was reading something this week. Here are the top 10 influencers on Instagram. Check this out. From 2014, I didn't even know Instagram existed in 2014, but from 2014 to 2020, here are the top influencers on Instagram. Number one, Selena Gomez. I don't know. Selena Gomez. Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo, who's a very famous soccer player. Uh, you have Ariana Grande. You have Beyonce. <laughs> right? You have Beyonce. Kim, Dar Kim Kardashian. Taylor Swift. Kylie Jenner. Can you smell what the rock? Dwayne Johnson is cooking. He's on there. Justin Bieber, and of course, the last name that rounds out this list of top influencers on Instagram from 2014 through 2020 is no other than your pastor, Anthony Milas. So let's give him a big hand today, okay? Pastor Anthony Milas, top 10 influencer on Instagram. So I told you my talk today is called Not a Lot of Influence. That's kind of a play on words because I want to talk to you about a guy in the Old Testament whose name was Lot. In Genesis chapter 18... God came down and was talking to Lot's uncle, Abraham, and said to Abraham, I'm going to destroy this whole region of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's two big cities. There's a lot of evil there. You need to know it. Your nephew there, his wife, their kids, their homies, they're all part of those two cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, when Abraham and Lot... Their families were getting larger and larger and larger and their possessions because God was blessing them. They decided because there was a lot of squabbling with their servants and stuff to kind of go one side of the region and to the other side. Lot chose this area that was, had these two cities in there called Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah by reputation were very, very evil cities. A lot of just absurd, crazy sexual behavior uh, we'll read about some of that in this passage here. So God tells Abraham this, probably so that Abraham would go get Lot and get him out of the city. But Abraham's response to God was this. God, if there were 50 righteous people in that city, I know my nephew and his wife and his kids are there, but maybe they've had enough influence to where 46 other people came 
and had a relationship with God and they were making sacrifices and they were meeting maybe in a life group of some kind and they had enough influence to maybe everybody on their block and in their community had a relationship with God. If 50 righteous people were found in that city, would you still destroy the city? And God said no. And then, and then Abraham said it again. God, I don't want to test you. I don't want to be disrespectful to you. But man, 40 is kind of a close number to 50. Would you destroy the city if 40 righteous people were found? God said no. And then he said 30. And then he said 20. And then he asked blatantly. I mean, can you imagine this? For 10 righteous people people. Ten righteous people means you have Lot and his wife, his two daughters, maybe guys they were dating would make it to six, and if they just had two other couples, four people, that they had any kind of spiritual influence on whatsoever, then those ten righteous people would redeem those entire cities, and God would not destroy them. So let's look at what happens in Genesis chapter 19, I'm going to read for you kind of a big hunk of scripture here, so follow along with me. The words will be on the screen, Genesis uh, chapter 19, verses 1 through 17, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version today. The Bible says this, two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, hear now, my lords. Please turn into your servant's house and spend the night. I'll wash your feet, then you may rise early and go your way. And they said, no, we're going to spend the night here in the open square. But he insisted strongly, so they turned in with him and entered his house. Then he made him a feast, baked him some unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they laid down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all of the people from every quarter surrounded the house, and they called to Lot, and they said to him, where are the men who came tonight Bring them out so that we may know them physically or carnally. Men came to their house and they wanted the guest men in Lot's house to come out so that they could have a big sexual orgy together. That's what the Bible tells us here. This is like, like watching uh, something on HBO today happening right here, right in, in, in the book of Genesis. So Lot went out and told them through the doorway, shut down the door behind them, please, brothers, do not do this wicked thing. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Now listen to what Lot says here. Let me bring them out to you and you may do as you wish. Only do nothing to these men since this is the reason they have come under attack uh, under the shadow of my roof. And this tells you two things about Lot. He feared God and he didn't love his daughters the way that he should have. And just to, I mean, it's incomprehensible that this statement's even made. And it's even offensive a little bit to read this passage of Scripture. But this is such a great story, and I want you to get the big meaning of this with God. This is not about God destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Just follow along with me. He said, so lot something through the doorway, shut the door. He said, please, guys, don't do this. I'll send you my daughters. Verse number 9, he says, and they, and they said, stand back. And when they said this, this one came in to stay here and he keeps acting as a judge. Now, we will deal with worse than you than we will with them. So these guys pressed hard against Lot's door, nearly to the point where it broke the door down. But the men reached out their hands. The two angels reached out their hands, pulled Lot back into the house with them, shut the door. And then they struck the men down who were around the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became very weary of trying to find the door. Then these men said to Lot, have you anybody else here, sons-in-laws, your sons, daughters, whoever you have, let's take them out of this place for we're going to destroy this place because the outcry against them has grown so great before the face of our Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out, spoke to his sons-in-law, so he had six now, Lot, his wife, his two daughters, two sons-in-law, six people. Lot went out, spoke to his sons-in-laws, who had married his daughters, and said, get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But his son-in-laws thought he was joking. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, get up, take your wife and your two daughters and whoever else you have with you, lest they be consumed by the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful to him, they brought him out 
and sent him outside of the city. So it came to pass when they brought them outside that he said, escape for your life. Don't look behind you. Stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains unless you be destroyed. And what happened was the angels took them out of the city. These guys, the angels dressed in men's attire, took them out of the city. They said, don't even look back. And, and when God started to rain fire down from heaven on Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot's wife looked back, looking back in a way of, of, of regret, of sorrow, of, of, of being sad because she loved living in that city so much that God turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt. Tragic, tragic story. Abraham negotiated with God, believing that Lot had influence. Lot needed to less than double his family in order to save the entire city. Six of them. They needed to reach two other couples. Maybe these two sons-in-laws had a mom or dad. I mean, they could have had ten people just in the inner circle of their family that they had influence with, and it would have saved the entire city. But they, he didn't have the influence to even double his family. And the sad thing is, Lot had six, so close to ten, but only three escaped. So not only did his influence not grow, his influence was diminished. Lot did not influence because his family was influenced by the lifestyle of the people that lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. So here are some things today I want you to understand. Granted, this is the truth about your, about your life and about your church. I want you to understand this. Some things to understand about influence. You have every single one of you. If you're sitting next to somebody, I want you to tell them this. You have influence. Just say that to them right now. You have influence. Everybody in this room, everybody watching online, everybody that's going to be at Warriors this weekend, everybody in this church, connected to this church, has influence at some level, whether it's your family, your work, at home, online, on Facebook community. Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But you have influence. And here's the thing about your influence. There is someone who believes that you can make a difference with your influence. Jude, in verse number 22, there's no chapters, it's a short letter. It says that some have compassion and make a difference. God believes in you in that you can have an influence for people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that today? If you believe that today, say amen. If you believe that today, say uh huh. If you believe that today, then believe that God wants to use your influence for his honor and glory. I believe in you, church. I know that your pastors believe in you. I know that even more importantly than those two factors, that God believes in you. But here's the hard question I want to ask you today. Is your influence adding to the kingdom of God or negatively influencing the kingdom of God? We have all lived through the craziest year of our lives. I have a guy in our church, his name is Dave, and he called this year the zombie apocalypse. Okay, and I think there's a lot of, a lot of parallel truths to that that we could pull from. But here's the thing. We had this big worldwide pandemic. It divided our country. Um, it divided churches. Do you know Warehouse Church, we're here in Plano, Texas. We're right on the border of Dallas. There's Dallas County and there's Collin County. Plano's in Collin County. Dallas County is our next door neighbor. We are about maybe 10, 15 miles from downtown Dallas. Probably similar to your situation with Boston. You guys are probably a little, a little farther than Boston that we do. But we live in the same idea. We're like a suburb of the, of the city, but we're kind of part of the big metroplex area that it's called down here. And it's interesting to me because what I saw happen this year, instead, we tried to rally our church around ministering to people in our community. And I know your church did the same thing. And we helped people that went to the hospital with COVID. We helped families that, uh, that, that had families that were, we, even people that weren't part of our church, we were taking food to and did all those things. And instead of this being a rallying point for us to reach out with the gospel of Jesus Christ and have influence in our community, 
when people were at their most hurting. You know what happened with COVID-19 in our church? And from what I hear, it happened in your church as well to a point. It kind of divided us a little bit. It kind of divided us a little bit. You have people that are super duper really wanting to make sure that everybody gets a vaccination and everybody wears masks all the time. And then you have, and we have it down here too, we have those people super duper, duper independent, no mask, no vaccination, don't take my rights, this, this, or this. That thing in New Hampshire on your flag that says live free or die, very, very prevalent mentality down here in Texas. We've got gunslinging independence all over the place down here. But I want to tell you something. The, the feelings on this have caught... We lost 25% of our church because this side didn't agree with this side, and we started arguing about things that weren't eternal. And it divided, and that's what Satan does. He divides and conquers. Lot and his wife only need to pull into their group from the first time they went in there six people. If you include their son-in-laws, they had to less then double their influence. And that small amount of influence would have saved an entire city. And, and you know what? That, that should be happening in our churches today. But unfortunately, we're allowing ourselves to get sucked up in this national argument of yes or no on the vaccination, yes or no on the treatment of, yes or no on this, and yes or no. And it's distracted us from what's important, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Reaching people for him. This has caused us to say, listen, we have couples in our church that have gone to marital counseling because their homes were even divided about this stuff. It's true. And I know it's happened in your church as well. I talk to your pastor all the time. So instead of unifying us, instead of this idea with Lot, hey, we need to get some people to have a relationship with God and repent, or everybody in these two cities is going to be destroyed. And what it did was it divided his family. Lot's influence was a negative number on the influence for the kingdom of God. He went in with four, added two son-in-laws, got to six, could have added their in-laws and got to ten, just like that. The Bible says when he left, he went in with four, he came out with three. He had a negative impact on the kingdom of God and his ability to have compassion and save some. Is your influence adding to or taking away from the kingdom of God? Listen, you look at this passage of scripture. I'm done talking about COVID. Somebody say amen. Aren't you sick of talking about this stuff? It's like everywhere we go. COVID, 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 right? So I'm done talking about it. Give me an amen. Gotcha. Okay, we're done talking about that. But here's the thing I want you to grab onto today. Are you changing your world or is your world changing you? Are you changing your world? Are you a plus factor on the kingdom of God because you're part of granite? Are you a plus factor on the kingdom of God because you live on the street that you live? Or you work at the place that you work? Or you're the father or mother of the kids that you have? Are you a plus factor? Or are more people going to heaven because you know Christ as Savior? Or are you having such a negative impact, not even your kids or your husband or wife is, is part of the church or part of the family of God? Are you changing the world? Listen, the world changed Lot's family. The world changed Lot's family so much that his wife longed to go back. The angel said... They wrote the cover song for the album by Boston, Don't Look Back. The angel said, don't look back, a new day's breaking. It's been too long since I felt this way. He said, don't look back. And what did Lot's wife do? She looked back. And it wasn't just the look, it was the longing for. No, don't destroy this place I love. Don't destroy. She loved all that stuff. And listen. You know all the stuff that was going on in that city. If she looked back yearning for it, she was probably a part of it. She wanted to go back. That world changed her. But Lot and his wife and his two daughters left that place and it was destroyed because they had this much influence. Moms and dads, how much influence do you have in your home with your kids? 
Husbands, do you have influence with your wives? Wives, do you have influence with your husbands? Do you have influence at your work? Do you have influence where you live? Do people know that you're a believer? Do you have influence in this church? Are you a unifier or a divider? When you see somebody with or without the mask or with or without that, are you a, oh no, I can't believe it. I don't like you anymore. Or are you a person that's trying to unify the body of God to make a kingdom impact right here in New England? That's what God's called you to do. Is your influence adding to or taking away from kingdom work? Is your influence changing the world or is it changing you? And I'm going to ask you this last question today. Let's say that you're a family of five people. And God came down and said to you, we're going to destroy this whole area unless there's ten righteous people here. You see, if Lot and his family would have been sincere in their relationship with God... And just one at a time. You know, we get this idea. Listen, I, I, I love your church. I love what you guys are doing in New England. I hear Pastor Anthony talk about the, 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 the burden and conviction on his heart that God's placed on him, that, that you guys have a plan and are actively pursuing reaching New England for the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you agree with that, say amen, right? You guys agree with that. You know that that's true. But here's the thing. We're not all going to reach everybody. But you know what? If all of us, if all of us, if your family of four or five, if everybody in Granite reached one person this year and doubled your influence, if Lot's family would have reached less than one person for the kingdom of God, that would have redeemed and saved that whole city from destruction. I wonder what that means for Granite and New England. I wonder what that means for your family in, 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 in the community that you, that you live in. I know, it's a, it's a, to think that your church of 2,000 people reaching a region where 30 or 40% of this whole country lives is a very daunting task. But you know what? Your church and this church and this church and this church and our church in Plano, Texas, with an emphasis on New England as well, all of, the, all of us partnering together, reaching one community, reaching one family, reaching one person, could change the trajectory of eternity for an entire region. You have influence. And what a great responsibility. But we understand when we're privileged, that means we have responsibility. If you know the gospel of Jesus Christ, don't hoard it and keep it to yourself. Make sure that you use your influence. Use your influence by inviting somebody to come to your church service next week. Use your influence by taking this message and sharing it on Facebook so that other people can hear the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Invite somebody to church. Be a positive influence in your community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you're doing Facebooky stuff, listen, don't tell people that you did or didn't get a shot. Who cares? Who cares? Why is that the most important thing we're sharing with people today? Tell people how important they are. Tell them how much they're loved. Tell them how much Jesus loves them. Tell them how much Granite United loves them. Tell them all the great stuff that happened at the Warriors Conference this weekend. Tell them what God's doing in your life. Share a Bible verse, but don't be, na 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 boo boo I got a shot, I'm better than you are, or I'm not getting a shot, you can't tell me what to do. Let's put that stupid stuff behind us and make the emphasis in our conversation conversation on our social media and in our conversations in the community today the gospel of Jesus Christ you have influence use it for him this week let's pray father we thank you we love you we honor you we thank you for what you did in the heart of our men during the warriors conference this week we thank you for what you're doing at granite united today all over New England. Father, bring us back together whole as a family again soon, Lord, so that we can be united in, 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 in our conviction to reach this whole region with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, what Satan is using to divide us, we, we, we rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ, and we ask you, Lord, 
to put that behind us, that we would look forward and use our influence to reach just one, one person, one family, one community at a time with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We honor you today. And Father, if someone today doesn't know Christ as Savior, we pray that today would be their day of salvation. That they would pray and ask Jesus to forgive them, to come into their hearts, and to save them, and to be in their life for all of eternity. Help this service today influence one to come to know Christ. As we continue to pray, in Jesus' name, amen. What a powerful message. And if you just said yes to Jesus, we're so excited for you. And the first thing you should do is tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell us. Let us know. You can go to grannyunited.com slash next step. I'll say it again. Grannyunited.com slash next step for you to find out more about the decision you've made. Also, if you want to be prayed for, or maybe it's your first time here and you just want to learn more, that's the place to go. Go to grannyunited.com slash next step. And it's not too late to share this out. We talked about before how this is a, such a simple way to share part of your story and you never know who it's going to impact. So share this out. It's also not too late to give. You can text the number on the screen or go to greenunited.com slash giving. Yeah, and I'm glad you didn't go anywhere yet, okay? Because there's still more. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I like it. We get to worship together. And you know, Worship is a trademark of passionate followers of Jesus. It's fuel for the mission. It gets us in the right perspective of yep. who God is in our life. So right now, like, like Kara said at the beginning of the service, really, really give an opportunity right now to lean in and really dig into this, right? You'll be surprised with what the Lord does in it. So let's worship together, church. I trust you, I don't need 
God, I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus, bring new wine Jesus, renew our